So connecting anarchists with the National Labor Relations Act, to my mind, is fucking bizarre. Because what the National Labor Relations Act did was disempower workers, largely. It helped institutional unions, but it took away a lot of the union's clout. Because basically, it, it, the unions traded off strikes for mediation and binding arbitration and things like that. That was the trade-off in the NLRA. So before that, the typical worker's response to being treated like shit was to vote with their feet and leave and strike. And it was a very effective tactic. It was very disruptive for businesses, however. And they realized that that era, there was a, the unions were still strong enough they had to deal with them in some fashion. So basically, that's what NLRA did. It said, you can't strike anymore. Wildcat strikes are no longer okay. Instead, you'll have binding arbitration. So when you come to, you can't meet, have a meeting of the minds, you can file grievances, you can have negotiations, and then you can have a disinterested third party make the decision for you. So the labor laws in this country, in fact, restrict the rights of workers more than they do the rights rights of companies. And that's where I was going with that. Um, it was kind of a lengthy explanation for where I came, where it came from. But there are certainly things labor laws do. I was a union steward or grievance officer for years and years. So there's um, some laws that, like there's minimum wage laws, which there's arguments pro and con on them, so I'm not even going to go there. Um, but probably a better, a more helpful than not to the individuals who are those low wage jobs. And then there's the Labor Stand Fair Labor Standards Act, F FSLA, which standardizes some stuff that's about benefits and earned time and how differentials are applied to hourly wages and so on. And that arguably is better for the workers, but the fact that unions have had their power taken away, basically everybody has a no strike clause. That's standard boilerplate language in every contract these days. So if you strike during the contract, you're in the wrong. You can only strike in between contracts. And that kind of stuff was institutionalized by the National Labor Relations Act and the whole web of labor laws. So looking at strictly at sort of labor union piece of it, the unions were disempowered by the National Labor Relations Act, disproportionate to the gains they made. But in general, also, I think the other point I would make is that corporate ownership is a government institution. So that if you have a you have a business and you have stockholders and you have workers, and so when profits fall, they fire workers. They don't cut dividends, right? Which well, is what's happening now. When people are out of work, some of these big fucking banks are still paying dividends as they lay people off. I mean, I think that's institutionalized. The property, property and ownership are institutionalized and defended by the state so that those people are considered owners, whereas the workers who contribute all the labor are not owners, even though they're there every day in the factories. And I believe that people have the right to control the place they work and workers should take over the factories. I absolutely believe that. And they can't because of the government. government. I think they have a better claim to ownership than the people who actually own all these businesses because they're work. That's the lefty in me. I was making two points. One is that labor relations, you know, labor laws don't help workers and capitalist property relations are imposed by the government. And if the government wasn't there to send out their cops to defend the companies, workers could take them over. Mm -hmm.